everybody, and welcome to the week six uh, lecture for American Note One, and this is entitled Revolution and Enlightenment. The readings for this week are some introductory information about American literature from 1700 to 1820 to prepare you for the, uh, the next couple of weeks, as well as some selections from the autobiographies of uh, Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin and a selection from Thomas Paine's uh, Common Sense. And I think you'll, you'll like all three. Uh, they're, they're fairly short, and um, uh, these are all very important readings um, from three very different men who are you know, extremely historically significant. Um, and you know, their lives and their writings are, are very indicative of a particularly important time in American history uh, and a time where literature actually was history. A little bit of background, and you can refer to the, the PowerPoint slides for this as well as your introductory readings. Um, what was going on in Europe was very influential on what was going on in the colonies. Um, when you look at, especially with the authors that we're, you're reading in this section right now, the Age of Enlightenment is the background uh, that is very important for these folks. Um, the context, philosophically, scientifically, for people like Paine, Franklin, and Jefferson uh, were um, just radical steps forward in science, radical steps forward in philosophy, uh, radical steps forward in understanding the world around us and ways of understanding the world of, around us that really changed um, not only the way that we perceived the world, but also the way that we perceived how we could shape the world, which changed the way we thought about things like government, for instance. Um, a philo philosophers such as John Locke were highly influential on people like Thomas Paine and Thomas Jefferson, our founding fathers, in the way that they looked at how they could shape their realities, how they could live their lives, and the concepts of things like the social contract versus the divine right of kings, something that hadn't been questioned ever before um, became something that was up for debate, um, whether kings had this divine right of rule over the people that they ruled or if people had natural rights, uh, as John Locke described them, the, the natural rights of life, liberty, and property, which Thomas Jefferson shapes into life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, now, these fall into contrast with what we studied with the Puritans, and also there are some similarities as well. Uh, the obvious contrast with the Puritan ideas are, are that um, the, the philosophers of the Enlightenment era uh, see man as a blank slate. Uh, Locke coins the term tabula rasa, uh, or actually literally blank slate, versus the Puritans who uh, see man as tainted by original sin. The Puritans see God's laws as primary, whereas the, the philosophers and scientists um, talk about advancements in science with Newtonian physics. Uh, the, the scientists and philosophers see natural laws as being primary and that the way that we understand the world is through our understanding of nature. Um, and uh, the, the introductory material talks a little bit about deists and the way that uh, God is revealed through the way that the natural world is understood, as opposed as opposed to through um, natural through revelation through the Bible or through uh, God's spokesman on earth. But there are some similarities, and I think those are important in the way that we look at America. America being this this melting pot of ideas and being a nation based on ideas. That um, you know the the foundational principles of America, this idea of there being uh, a covenant of people, um, this idea of civil liberty being primary based on a covenant, based on a social contract. Look back at William Bradford and the Pilgrims and the Mayflower Compact. Um, look back at Winthrop, John Winthrop, and his, uh, his emphasis on the importance of uh, civil liberty. Um, and also look back at the Puritans themselves and what they did with the Glorious Revolution in England, that it's important to overthrow an oppressive government if they're not following the will of the people. America itself was changing and growing. Uh, there was dramatic growth outside of New England. Um, the population of Virginia 
had tripled from 1645 to 1665. Uh, and by 1760, as the, the textbook points out, there were 1.6 million in the colonies, if you count Georgia. There are changes in the social structure as well. Whereas immigrants in uh, the Northeast, Massachusetts Bay, had typically been middle class. The, a lot of the new immigrants flooding into uh, North America were now high class and very much lower class, working class. You had the uh, the higher class plantation owners coming in and, and grabbing up large swaths of land, and you had lower class people coming in to work that land, large numbers of indentured servants, for instance, coming in, um, people escaping poverty in in Northern England and Ireland uh, and across the continent as well. Um, you had many straightforward Church of England uh, folks, Anglicans, coming in from the, the Bristol region. But you also had other uh, dissenters. You had Quakers and Baptists and other people of, of different Protestant religions coming in as well. Um, and these people were definitely varied in educational level, uh, whereas the, the Northeastern Puritans were mainly very well educated, these folks weren't necessarily that way. And um, they followed different agricultural patterns as well. Uh, there, there was a slavery-based economy that grew in the South, and that's very important uh, in considering how America developed. And, of course, this brings in questions that are addressed in the Declaration of Independence, for instance. We soon begin to see some of the, the clash of the radical ideas of the Enlightenment with... Uh, some of the conservative ideas, uh, Puritan ideas of religion, um, and we also see sort of the growing concerns of capitalism and urbanization, but we also see how some of the ideas of the Enlightenment become sort of secularized and become part of the American identity, uh, ideas about self-improvement and self-actualization that definitely come out in Benjamin Franklin, ideas about self-rule and natural rights that come out through Thomas Paine and Thomas Jefferson. So be paying attention to how some of these ideas, these philosophical ideas, come out in the readings uh, that we're going to be looking at.